So joining us on the show right now, Colin Plume, who is CEO of Noble Gold, a company that has sponsored this channel for years now. Uh, those of you who have watched it for a while know that. And I have to just let him know that I endlessly appreciate this. And by the way, one of the reasons that we've stuck with Noble Gold so long is that they are one of the best uh, gold IRA companies out there, if not the best. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go out and check uh, Business Insider's latest top gold companies of 2023 and just their Google reviews, which are impeccable. I think if you go check it out right now, it's sitting at five stars. So thanks for taking the time and coming to talk with us. Yeah, no, um, thank you so much. No, uh, I, it's, uh, we work hard for those reviews and, uh, no, but thank you for mentioning that. And, and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a few years, a lot's happened, uh, you know, new administration, the dollars talk, you know, people are saying they should replace the dollar. I mean, there's just so much happening out there uh, in the economy. So I'm excited to uh, to dive in today. Right. Yeah. And and to that point, uh, according to the news out there, the dollar uh, having lost 85 percent of its value now since the 70s, uh, which just happens to be when the dollar was decoupled from gold right. and with the government. As always, especially the Biden administration spending and printing money, uh, and they just seem bent on continuing this tradition. Um, and it's bound to end badly with inflation rising higher and higher. Uh, given that environment, you know, can you help us break down what Noble Gold uh, Investments is offering and how it can help my viewers? Yeah, I mean, well, let's talk. I mean, we're at war, so I mean, there's there's the dollar inflation before. Uh, you know, we went into this war, we, we had heavy inflation, inflation hit almost 9%. Yep. Um, and so we're in a spending spree, right? Where you just continue to spend and spend and spend, um, you know, this, this recent time where they raised the debt ceiling. Um, and it's a big joke because they, they come and, you know, the Republicans actually had a good plan to make some, some substantial cuts, um, on spending mm -hmm. and basically 99% of it gets thrown out. Uh, there's a few minor changes in there. They, they pulled back a little bit on the amount of IRS agents. Um, there were a few minor spending cuts uh, yeah. there, but, but overall, you know, the big chunks of the spending, they didn't even tackle at all. And then they sort of gave themselves a runway to, to go for two more years. Uh, so they're not even going to have this conversation for another two years in terms of the debt ceiling. Um, so they gave themselves in a big, big way to to continue to spend money and 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 put us in more debt as a country. And, you know, if anybody ever goes to that debt clock website, it's quite scary it, how fast yeah. uh, the amount of debt you and I uh, and everyone else <laughs> on the show, uh, how much we owe in, in the big picture of things. That's. And that's our, our big problem as a country is, and in most problems as countries today is that they just can't get their spending under control. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for a number of different reasons, politicians wanting to get reelected, people living longer. I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, people living 10, 15, 20, 30 years longer, obviously is going to have an effect on your economy. Yeah. So we have to address uh, a lot of these issues. Um, but we, we just seem to just kick the can down the street every time uh, in terms of spending. Yeah, and it just, it's it's a house of cars that is inevitably, it's not going to end well. And, and to that point, we keep hearing about uh, Bidenomics and the Biden administration continuing to claim that inflation's coming down. Don't worry, it's no big deal. And yet this despite the fact that when you go out grocery shopping or whatever it is, everybody can see the prices are still sky high. And when you look at polling, the most recent polling, it's got, I believe, something like 65 percent of Americans are feeling this economic pain. And then, you know, the, the Biden administration goes out and they do these press conferences and they say, no, 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 it's it's really good. And people just don't know it. They just don't know anybody. Right. So should people trust this or is inflation still a threat? Do you think? Well, I, I think the last inflation report was just under five percent, which is is still uh, high comparatively right. to where we've been for for about twenty years. I, I think 
Um, I don't believe we'll get back to 2% anytime soon, which is the Fed's sort of mandate. Mm -hmm. um, also, what's on the table next month, they've talked about them raising interest rates again, which is really hurt us. I mean, even Jerome Powell said that he knows that these high interest rates are slowing down the economy. He knows it affects a lot of people. And we're seeing layoffs in the worst areas. And I know they, if, if Biden and the administration will say that unemployment is low, 4%. But if you really look at the, the jobs that people want, these are $60,000 to $300,000 a year jobs. Those are getting cut. All those, A lot of those tech jobs got cut at a lot of the big companies. Uh, Ford is actually considering uh, firing 1,000 engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of big corporations that are cutting those the jobs that people want. So yeah, you have your hospitality jobs that are making minimum wage or a little bit above that, are, that people are getting hired for. But skilled jobs with, with tenure, those are jobs that are really getting replaced right now and they're not growing. And I, I think it's a lot of it is because, you know, these corporations, they don't know when we're going to get out of this hole. They don't know how long it's going to be in this situation. And, and they are affected by high interest rates also. So I think that there, there's a def, definitely a feeling out there of people being nervous and mm -hmm. not knowing what to do from corporations to individuals. I don't know if you saw this, but 34% of people's portfolios, millionaires right now is sitting in cash. It's the highest it's been in almost 15 years. That is wild. That's and so <laughs> people are sitting in the, the worst performing asset uh, available in, in the world, cash or on a right. cash alternative, you know, maybe a money market making 3% or whatever it is. But but that's how nervous people are that even the wealthiest, you know, these are the top, you know, one to three percent, even they're sitting in cash. So you, could you imagine a corporation? I mean, they're they're definitely going to do layoffs. They're definitely afraid. Yeah. And, and they don't know where the runway is. And so that's that's a big problem for our economy. And then, and then the idea that these wealthy Americans would be willing to resort to sitting in cash. I mean, it seems so silly. Uh, to be in cash. I mean, gold, silver, you know, gold's in the 1900s, silver's in the low 20s. Yep. Uh, great buying opportunities, in my opinion. To sit in cash to make two, three percent um, with, a, with a significant amount of their portfolios just shows that they don't feel comfortable with the stock market. They don't feel comfortable with typical investments like bonds. They're just waiting to see if anything kind of turns. And then hopefully they'll divest some of that money into uh, into the market. But you can't you can't sustain your way of life keeping money in cash with what the way that we deal with it. You know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when you, you can get a decent return in a CD or something in a bank, it made sense. Uh, but nowadays, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So the fact that the, all of these wealthy people are so afraid that they're sitting in cash is really telling uh, of what's happening in the economy. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we've been hearing about gold prices and uh, 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 precious metals prices going up. Um, you know, why is that? What, like when we talk about the dollar and why it's so dangerous, the reason is because the value, you know, is fluctuating uh, constantly and the dollar, you know, isn't as, um, you know, you can't depend on it as much, at least right now, as you used to be able to. So, right. you know, so why is it that, you know, gold, silver, uh, and other pl precious metals, what makes those so trustworthy? And, and well, I think you when you, yeah. And I think, you know, if you go back the last year and a half, the dollar with rising interest rates, the dollar has actually been very strong. Mm -hmm. So the oh. dollar has been relatively strong. That's why it's been fascinating to see gold go up because usually it's the other way around, right? You'd see the dollar going down and gold going up, but actually, What's really been happening is the dollar has been very strong and going up because of high interest rates and gold has been going up. It's, it's a very uh, unique situation that we've been over the last 12 months. But the reason that you see people going into gold is they're fleeing uh, investments they don't feel comfortable with. So, for instance, you know, two, three months ago, you had some major banks go out of business uh, that had to get you know bought out. And. Mm -hmm. So people were just thinking to themselves, like, what if I'm stuck in one of these banks and the FDIC doesn't doesn't come in and bail them out? And yes, they were able to in these specific situations. But if we see more of the larger banks go out of business, there's not going to be there's not enough money in the reserves 
of the FDIC to bail out all of these big banks. They only have 100 to $110 billion. If you saw some of these larger banks go out of business, we would we would be in a very bad situation. Uh, so that's a, one of the reasons I think this year alone, investors have been moving out of their typical banks, typical relationships, getting some physical gold because they go, hey, you know what? I'll get out of the bank. I'll buy gold. I'll hold it. I don't have to worry about what's going on with the bank. I'm in control of it. I'm in charge of my own destiny. And so a lot of people over those you know month or two when the banks were having problems were doing mm-hmm. now. I think the, there's more banks to follow. There's more medium, small banks, credit unions. They're going to have a lot of problems this year because how do how does a bank make money? Right. In today's environment, they don't charge fees. Right. So right. how do they make money? They need deposits. Well, people are pulling deposits, so they need money to lend money. So the ways that they make money is deposits and then they lend the money or they invest it. So they go out and invest the money. People are pulling deposits. So medium sized banks are struggling. Number two, they make money on loans. Well, there's no home loans right now. The the market's totally, you know, there's so few people buying new homes. So they lost that revenue stream. There's car loans. Some people are still buying cars, but the rates are high. So people are being pretty cautious on buying cars. So a two or three of their main income streams are really struggling right now and they're not doing well there. So I I do believe that there's more banks to follow this year. And, And it is a sad situation when you see these banks. Now, if you look at how many banks we have in the U.S., we don't have that many banks comparatively to 20 years ago. During when the the banking crisis happened in 2009, we had 21,000 banks in this country. We have 4,300 banks right now. So we've already had a lot of banks go out of business or get bought up or whatever it is. There is not that many banks. And that's not good. That's a monopoly. We're we're becoming a a monopoly in the banking world. And that's not a good thing. That's not safe. You need to have funds dispersed in a lot of different areas to have that layer of protection. So it's we're running into a unique situation in in our economy where banks that we thought would be around forever are are really struggling and not doing well. I mean, First Republic Bank, that's a pretty big bank that went out of business and Mm -hmm. they had some very high net worth individuals that had cash sitting there. You would have thought they did great, uh, but they obviously struggled. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, you know, obviously made some bad bets, some bad decisions. And then you had that the other bank. uh, I can't think of the name of the one that cryptocurrency bank that was really focused. It made sense that they went out of business. Obviously, they were lending money to crypto companies and exchanges and things of that nature. So they uh, sort of ran into a problem. But I think the idea of a lot of the money in this world is moving into the same institutions. It does make it a little precarious and a little scary to have so much of that control uh, in the hands in, in, in much less amount of people. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, when it comes to my viewers and people who might, you know, have $10,000, you know, laying around, they want to invest that and they want to come to you to do that. What would you recommend they invest that into people? I think when they think about investing into this, they think of, you know, numbers on a piece of paper, that they're that they're buying, uh, but yeah, you can well, invest into an IRA, a Roth, a four hundred one k, and then there's you know tangible, actual coins. Yeah, well, anything we sell is tangible investment. So whether you do it in an IRA or whether you do it direct or however you're, you're shipping it to your doorstep, you're buying these items. Whether it's stored in a depository, we ship it to you. That's determined by whether it's an IRA or not. But you're buying the same stuff. It's all segregated. So whether you're buying coins or bars from us, it's all it's all the same item. You know, I think today, you know, it, it's sort of a, a a general statement that being diversified is really important right now. I think that's what I've always tried to focus on is you never know what investment's going to be up when you need it at retirement. Mm-hmm. So people over the last few years that had all their net worth in the stock market are furious because they are liquidating their stocks to live on at a value that was much lower than where it was a year or two years ago. So that's Mm -hmm. not good because everybody builds their strategy for retirement based on having a certain amount of different investments. If if you had some in gold and silver of last year or two and you had some in the stock market, gold shooting up, breaking through 2000 and you go, hey, I got to fix the car. I got to pay rent or maybe you sell some of that gold at 2050 and, and then you're not selling your stocks at a depressed value. So that's why having that pie and having the different investments, you know, another example is real estate, you know, we're talking about how 
The loans are really high. If you had all your net worth in real estate right now and you needed money, you are furious because you're having to sell your property at a lower value than it was a year and a half ago, right? right. So having liquidity and having different assets uh, during time, economic times, and these always happen. This isn't like abnormal. Mm -hmm. Every seven to 10 years, the stock market collapses. This bull market was a little bit longer. This was about a 12 year bull market, but generally speaking, what we're seeing is is normal. You're going to have two to three years of a recession or something worse. And then typically, hopefully we figure it out and things get better and, and then things start to pick up. But having that flexibility during that time period is really important because, you know, for some people that retired a year and a half ago, they had this whole plan ahead of them. Hey, I'll sell a little bit of stocks each year to live on. Well, they're selling those stocks at 20, 30, 40 percent where the, they, they were in the, in the past. So. Uh, that doesn't help you in, in retirement. So I know you're a busy guy, Colin, and I'm going to wrap this up here soon. But I can tell you that my audience is definitely interested in this. I get emails all the time. People asking me, uh, oh, what, you know, what what happens? How do I do this? Uh, when I call out and I always just send them to the number, <laughs> I, I send them to the link or to the number because I'm not really sure. So could you maybe just give a quick breakdown of if somebody calls the number 877-646-5347 or uh, goes to noblegoldinvestments.com. What is the first step? What is the process? How is that going to go? Yeah, so they're going to get transferred to a customer service rep. And that customer service rep has a whole team underneath them. Basically, their job is to field your questions, answer all the questions you have, spend as much time as you need. And, and people spend 10 minutes. Sometimes they spend an hour on the phone with us. And you're going to talk to a live person here in the U.S. You're going to talk to a real person. <laughs> so okay. you're going to talk to them and you're going to have some high level questions. And then they may ask you some questions. They may ask you about what you know or what interests or what had you interested. They And you're going to have a conversation with someone that is a real person that owns gold and silver, that believes in it. And, and the ages range. You know, our, our customer service reps are anywhere from 25 to the oldest is my father who came out of retirement. He's 70 <laughs> years old. Oh, that's and great. He's a Vietnam vet and he <laughs> um, is a bad golfer and didn't want to retire. He's a horrible. No, he's not a horrible. He's actually a decent golfer, but he doesn't like golf. He likes to work. He likes, he likes to. So he's he, even he gets up and talks to people. And basically you're having a conversation is what you're doing. You're going to learn about it. You're going to talk to somebody that's honest and they're going to give you the real deal on this on this industry and they're going to talk to you about the products they are going to talk to you about gold and silver and they're going to give you the different products now what we've done in noble gold investments we've streamlined it to make it easier because there are companies right now that have ten thousand products on their website how would anybody know what especially new getting into it so we basically sell between 10 and maybe 25 products gold silver platinum palladium bars and coins stuff like this we sell the stuff that has the highest weight and the highest purity. So we're going to go through some of the options of things that we sell and why. Why are we selling these items? Why do we think you should buy these items? But you decide what items you're going to buy and what amount, how much gold, how much silver. We're going to send you some free guides. You're going to call us back. You know, we, we, we want people to digest this and, and kind of uh, get really comfortable with, with what they're doing. And then once they're ready to buy, if they're doing an IRA, we're going to walk you through the paperwork. Everything's online. We can do it online for you. It's all through DocuSign. If they're just doing a direct investment, we're going to go through the options, send a wire in. Once we get the wire, our goal is to send that metal to you within seven to 10 days. Um, and so that's our goal is to get it out quick. It comes in a nondescript package. No one's going to know what you're going to receive. You're going to sign for the package, open it verify it, authenticate it, make sure it's absolutely everything that you purchased. And then you'll shoot us an email or a call. Let us know that you got everything in good order. You can read about our reviews online. We take uh, our shipping very serious. We take our product very serious. Um, we only ship out high quality product um, and, and we guarantee it. If anything is in there that that isn't good or, you know, it's not perfect, we'll fix it. And and so that's basically what we've done. Uh, I've been in the business for almost 14 years. Um, Noble Gold Investments been around almost eight years. So, and everything that we've done is is built in that fashion. And we are the largest gold IRA company in the country. We do more IRAs than anybody. Uh, we've been doing that for the last two years. And we also ship millions and millions of dollars a month 
of gold and silver to to uh, to people's doorsteps. So we do a little bit of both. Well, yeah, I mean, and I've really enjoyed working with you guys for years now. And while, as always, there are no guarantees in any of this, I think that you're going to get your best bet going with Noble Gold. And uh, just uh, one more quick question. You, you know, you mentioned that um, – that you know they're going to walk you through it they're, they're going to they're going to tell you while they're not going to tell you what to buy they're going to tell you they're going to give you the best information on you know they're going to direct you to the best possible direction well, we, and we have the data of what people are buying so basically we're you're going to go hey what what are people buying we're going to go well a lot of people are buying these coins or a lot of buy this part and you're going to decide you know what you want but we'll tell you we'll give you the information of what people are buying from us very right. heavy on silver right now uh, heavy on gold and actually platinum over the last six months has been a lot of people have been buying platinum because they're putting it in catalytic converters again so a lot of people have been talking about platinum so that's something on the radar too but ultimately you're going to have time digest and you're and i promise you you're going to talk to someone that you like and you enjoy and uh and that's what it's all about we we're old school i know everybody's going ai and everyone's going this we're not we're people you're talking to people live uh, I think when you're making a financial decision, you want to talk to a live person. So we're always going to have live people uh, that you can talk to on the phone. Oh, yeah, that's great. I cannot stand talking to AI chatbot. It's the most infuriating thing you could ever do. And uh, so but yeah, just one last thing on, uh, you know, just the value of precious metals staying consistent. Uh, the world that we live in is only going to increasingly need these precious metals. And you're seeing it all around you with electric cars and just electronics, uh, processors. These things are always going to be needed. Uh, and so, you know, that value is going to be there. That's how I know that. That's what uh, makes me feel good about this sort of investment. So me too. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 so, and, and, and in an investment, you want to look at what's the future demand, right? I mean, it's, exactly. I think that's really important. When you're investing in a company, you do the same thing, right? You're going to go, hey, I'm going to invest in this company. And, you know, I think it, one example I always think about is um, Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, they went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you walk into a Bed Bath & Beyond, you go, oh, there's nobody in here. This place is that you knew they were going down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at investment like gold and silver, you're going, okay, let's look at the uses of these metals. Where, where, Where's the future going? And I think you will realize that, that these metals have a future where we're going these aren't like oh, yeah. metals that are going away anytime soon and obviously there's more rare metals and you know there's china that's kind of trying to conquer the world and they, they have a lot of these precious uh, uh metals and, and different things all over the world but these are metals that we can acquire these are things that are in high demand uh and these are things that are used every day in in industry and i think that's really important in an investment is that you want something that's going to have that continual uh use yeah, and I and I do believe as far as you know, China's kind of iron grip on precious metals. I do believe Australia is kind of challenging them on that right now. Correct. Yeah, and, and so that yeah. that that uh, paradigm may be changing here pretty soon. And especially with you know, it's not going to just be Taiwan manufacturing these processors. It's going to be Australia. It's going to be America. You know, we have the right here in Ohio. We're building the largest uh, processor uh, factory in the world, I believe, right now. So big oh. things are coming along those lines. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta love, love Ohio. They they really they, it's that's the that's the strong old part of this country is like that's where a lot of the things happen. Some of the best hospitals in the world are in Ohio. I mean, there's a lot of great things happening. Ohio. I go to Ohio once or twice a year. It's great. I love it there. Um, great food, great people. So, but yeah, if anyone wants to learn about uh, what we do at Noble Gold Investments, give us a call. Um, call the phone number eight seven seven six four six five three four seven. Uh, or you can check out the website, you know, either way, if you don't want to talk to a live person. Yep. And uh, as always, you can get the uh, link in the description or pinned comment of any video uh, that I run the uh, at Noble Gold Ads in. So, uh, hey, and... and